Hello everybody, I'm very glad to be here. Last year was amazing and uh, this camp this year seems to be on the same track, so I'm happy to be with you. Uh, so last year I came to talk about uh, the Federation of the um, which is the federation of non-profit uh, do-it-yourself uh, internet access providers. And so that's what I mainly do on my spare time, participating, contributing to this uh, community and make people uh, understand what it's important to uh, control infrastructure of the internet and try to build uh, some, some of it. So um, this uh, make me, uh, made me uh, encounter some interesting people in the cinema uh, not really industry, but in the cinema business, and so the the, the project uh, which I'm going to talk to you about uh, is the DCP Bay. Uh, so a few uh, numbers about the Federation FDN. We uh, it was funded in 2011 with uh, seven non-profit uh, organizations and approximately 400 members. Now we are 26 with. Uh, nearly 2,000 members all around France and even in the Caribbean and in Belgium. So here's a map of the different, uh, that's a tool I introduced at the last Congress in Hamburg and that's a map of the non-profit ISPs uh, that are uh, uh, known uh, today and which, are, which have been uh, added in it. So, um, I'm going to talk uh, about free software, community networks, peer-to-peer, -peer, and a lot of fun that we have with this project, the DCP Bay, named obviously after uh, the Pirate Bay. So, um, cinema, how it works, uh, that's not my, uh, my uh, usual um, uh, environment, so I'm not an expert on cinema, on cinema. But well, you have the directors, the, 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 the film is being made, and then it has to be screened uh, in movie theaters. So um, this is kind of the job of the distributors, to have the uh, film to be uh, distributed in countries and uh, continents. Uh, then you have the um, film laboratories who are making the actual uh, copy uh, copies of the film and uh, and so on, and then you have the theaters where you can watch the film. Uh, so from the laboratories to the theaters, uh, you need to transport the films, uh, either on with an analogic form or uh, a digital one, uh, and that's the purpose, uh, purpose of the DCP Bay, and this part of the digital transport. So the digital cinema, um, there is a format called DCP, which stands for uh, digital cinema package. Uh, it's uh, the films are um, uh, encoded uh, in this format, are uh, in the presented in this format. Uh, this is the job of the laboratories, and it's often uh, sent on hard drives. Even if it's uh, digital, uh, they already they, they, um, they even send uh, physical uh, stuff uh, to the theaters and. Often they are damaged the uh, movies and so on, and they have to resent it, or the theaters have to ask to the, the next theater, hey, do you have a copy? Uh, I want to screen this film, and my copy was damaged. Um, to give you uh, an average size of a film, uh, it's uh, around um, 150 uh, gigabytes, um, so it's pretty heavy. Um, in this field of the transport, the digital, digital transport, uh, it's not crowded space. There are some big actors in France. Um, there is a subsidiary of Orange, which is called Glowclass. There is Smart Drug. There are uh, some others. But there is no diversity, and well, they're just big companies, and they, just, they are just here to make profit and so on. And of course, it is expensive, as there are a uh, few actors. They are they, are, they have no incentive to, to lower the price and so on, so the little uh, cinema are quite uh, constrained by this, uh, these big actors. So there was a need for an alternative and that's the, where the DCP Bay uh, arrives. Uh, so yeah, free software, network neutrality, VPN, peer-to-peer -peer, and a wide bunch of old school nerds. 
Um, no, I think we, we tried with the lights off and it was not really okay. good. Um, so where it all started? It all started with the Cinema Utopia in a network of small indie theaters in France. Uh, they have an historical record of doing cool stuff. They had the project we call Video and uh, Video en Poche, uh, uh, which allows you to go to the theater and to uh, with a USB key and uh, go back with the, the actual film without DRM and all that shit. And you can watch the movie. Uh, I think it costs five euros or something, and you can watch the movie uh, um, as much as you want, and you can even share it on whatever uh, support you want, BitTorrent, uh, USB key to your friend, and so on. So that's pretty cool. Um, they also um, uh, have uh, they, they pay uh, someone a PhD to to add the the support for the DCP format into VLC. Uh, which is also pretty cool, and they thought, yeah, why, why do we still bother with the the transport? Because um, uh, we know people who are doing internet access uh, because uh, they are mainly in Toulouse, and in Toulouse, in the south of France, you have a, a major non-profit uh, internet access provider who is providing access to squats and who is doing amazing things. Uh, it's called DataNeutral.net. And so they, they they know pretty well each other, the cinema and the the DISP, and they thought, okay, well the the ISP could very uh, perfect fun, could perfectly do the job that is being made by uh, the actors I mentioned uh, before. So they imagine why not doing a do do it yourself uh, digital transport, and that's where the project uh, was born. Um, so yeah, independent digital transport for independent cinema. Um, then we had a, a meeting in Paris with uh, independent small distributors, with uh, also networks of uh, cinema, GNCR and Utopia. Uh, it's mostly um, uh, yeah little uh, theaters with. Uh, um, very independent, and also with us, the Federation Federation FDN, uh, the non-profit internet access providers. And during this meeting, um, we presented the idea to distributors, and they were like, "Okay, that sounds very interesting. You have principles and values that you want to to defend, like network neutrality and so on. That's okay. We don't care, uh, but it seems pretty nice." And they were like, "Okay." Uh, well, I if you want to do this and you know your job and uh, if it if for us it doesn't cost much, uh, if, if it doesn't cost more than before, um, then go for it. And then we were set and the, the project uh, was really uh, going forward. It was like, I think one year ago or something, maybe, maybe less, eight months. Um, and now nobody sees me. <laughs> so, um, how do we connect the cinemas? Well, as I said, we are a bunch of internet access providers, so we do case-by-case -case solutions like broadband with ADSL and VDSL, uh, 5 gigahertz uh, wireless bridges, uh, maybe soon with uh, fiber, to, fiber to the cinema. Um, so yeah, we use the, the same technologies and the same solutions that we have uh, to cover uh, white zones and uh, um, dark zones, sorry, and this kind of things uh, with our ISPs, but we apply them to uh, the, the cinemas. And if you have questions about it, we can talk about it uh, after my talk. So what is the job actually? As I said, it's just transporting the film uh, with this format DCP to from the laboratories to the theaters. So from one from one point to multiple points. And today, what is being made is that <coughs> each theater received the, receives the film from the laboratory. So the laboratory sends one copy uh, to each uh, theater, th which is kind of pretty stupid. Uh, we seriously think they are doing it wrong uh, because. Well, they use the internet to send files from one point to multiple points, and mm, what seems to be a good idea is to use a peer-to-peer -peer protocol to do this. Um, so we came with a kind of a workflow and with um, some basic ideas to do this. 
uh, which was to copy uh, what, uh, what is being made by the, the wares uh, and the scene and so on, is to retrieve the, the, the films uh, on, a, on FTPs that are synchronized and to create the torrent and to uh, add it to the, um, to the trackers and then send the torrent files to the cinema. They add uh, the torrent to a uh, transmission web client and then they retrieve the film. It's as simple as that. Uh, so the technical solution is pretty simple and yeah, in clear we use an old and functional model which is peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, and the theater, as I said, added to transmission and a few hours later, ta-da, they have the film. So here is an example of a box that we um, that we asked the the cinema to to buy. Like it's twenty um, something like two hundred euros box um, with Linux in it and so on. It's uh, quite interesting hardware. Um, we automate the deployment uh, uh, with Ansible or with Playbooks. It's a configuration management tool, and that's my contribution to the project besides talking about it it's to uh, automate the process of adding uh, a new cinema into the into the network if you have questions questions about that also i can i can show you the the playbooks and all that stuff uh, afterwards uh, so but for now it's not uh, really uh, finished um we are often asked uh, okay you are distributing films from official industry to theaters using peer-to-peer, -peer. Uh, but how about the security? Uh, don't they complain about it? Then the distributors uh, are, are not they uh, uh, very uh, uh, cautious uh, with what you do with the film and so on? So basically, they don't care. They don't give a shit. Um, but uh, I shouldn't say that. Uh, I shouldn't say that in front of a camera that is recording what I say. Um, but basically, they, they so far they didn't ask any question. Um, but uh, to avoid uh, any uh, problems, we use uh, a private network between the theaters uh, using Tink, and uh, between the theaters and the seed servers. Uh, and we use a private tracker. tracker. Um, maybe uh, you can think of other private trackers that are better than this one. Uh, we didn't test uh, much, so we took the, the first uh, that um, uh, the first we we found. So basically, it's not highly secured, but it's secured enough so that we don't have any questions and we don't raise any. Uh, suspicions from the from the industry and well we distribute uh, mainly uh, <coughs> non-mainstream films so they are quite uh, uh, they are not so uh, after uh, these uh, issues so today the project uh, has been presented in Cannes uh, a few few months ago which was kind of interesting like we were there saying, hey, uh, we have a pretty interesting scheme uh, about distributing films using peer-to-peer -peer and so on. <laughs> like it was, to me, it was like kind of going there with a big uh, troll mask and saying, hey, hello. <laughs> um, but it was fun and, uh, and, and it went well. Um, today, there are approximately 10 cinemas participating. Uh, we have been contacted by, I think, 20 or something, uh, so we are slowly adding them to, to the network uh, because we have to, to check the, the bandwidth uh, to, to build the solutions to have a good bandwidth uh, to transfer the film. Uh, we have to uh, also um, uh, prepare all the stuff. Uh, so, um, and we have also uh, uh, three seed servers to, to distribute the the, the films. So tomorrow we expect to have more than more than 100 theaters, um, tens of movies. Already we've distributed something like I think 30 or 40 movies so far in in six months or so. Um, we would also want to kind of maybe not define a norm but push the uh, the big actors and all the others to to copy what we do and to be intelligent 
if it's not too much to ask, uh, and use peer-to-peer -peer and do like do use the internet and not uh, be stupid about it. And we expect also in the future to be um, maybe an entry point for free culture. As I said, the movie that we distribute today are non-mainstream, but they are still official. Uh, like uh, uh, copyrighted movies and so on, um, but um, and what happened is that the the theaters ask us by m email, hey uh, Nicolas Julien, do we have the this this film? Uh, I want to to screen it uh, next week, and then we answer yes, so we have it. Uh, let me uh, let me launch the transfer or let me send you the the dot torrent and and and. Uh, and voila. Um, but uh, what uh, what if we could say to these theaters, to these uh, Android theaters, hey, we have a new movie. It's a it's a documentary in Creative Commons, and it's very interesting, and sh you should screen it. And there, they could just click on the torrent, and they could uh, screen it uh, whenever they want uh, in a very simple way, and maybe building some catalog or, or something around it, and. Uh, that's uh, something that we could uh, imagine with this uh, already existing network. So to me, what is interesting in this is that it's a very unusual collaboration model. Like we we, uh, we try to use it to promote and defend some ideas like network neutrality, interoperability, free software, uh, and network decentralization. As I said, we have 26 organizations in our uh, federation all over France and so basically what we do is we try to have as much uh, peering and as much connections between the local ISPs uh, as possible uh, and so we try to also by using peer-to-peer -peer we we try to to to, to have uh, the traffic that is being sent from the southwest of France to the southeast not going to Paris which is completely stupid and which is well, the, the way the, the network uh, works, uh, the internet works in France mostly. Um, so we are trying to push towards this decentralization also. And we expect also to, to promote cultural diversity. Um, um, I was giving the talk in Amsterdam uh, one, one week ago. Uh, one interesting uh, remark that I had at, at the end is that uh, it was someone uh, we have been working with um, um, an independent theater in Amsterdam and or elsewhere in Netherlands, and he was telling me, um, the, and it's the same in France, the, the little theaters are literally forced to go to the digital, uh, uh, to, to go digital and to uh, uh, dump their analogic stuff and to screen digital movies because that's the only format that is. Uh, being uh, uh, offered by the distributors now, and well, it costs a lot because the the projector, the, the screeners. I don't know if it's the right term. The projectors, maybe, the beamers. Uh, it costs uh, digital beamers cost a lot. They tend to embed the security of the DCP <coughs> stuff in it. Like uh, um, DCP can be can uh, they, they have um, an encryption scheme um, that is not mandatory. Uh, and that can uh, that is to prevent the the leak of the film and so on. Uh, I, I have some funny stuff about it uh, if you if you want uh, for the if it uh, if I have some time at the end of the talk. Um, and so yeah, the the basically the the little theaters, the independent theaters, are forced to go digital. It costs a lot, and it put them into danger uh, in the financial. Uh, uh, dangerous zone, and so yeah, they they manage, they try to to go uh, to to add the DCP support to VLC uh, to reduce the cost of uh, screening the film. They try to uh, uh, also um, rely on non-profit ISPs uh, who are actually uh, making them pay what it costs and not uh, uh, an indecent uh, price for um, transporting the movie to to them. Uh, and so on. So to me, that's uh, also a very important, very important point. Uh, and as it's not my um, my 
my environment, the cinema, I don't really measure the impact of the, uh, the help that we bring to them, but uh, so far as uh, I can see the, the enthusiasm when we present the project to, to little theaters, I think this is pretty, m pretty important. Um, so this is the only project I know that is mixing peer-to-peer -peer free software, non-profit internet access providers, and the cinema uh, industry. Uh, it's come very, un some kind of alien, I think. Um, and it's also here to kind of reduce the cogn cognitive dissonance. Like, uh, we all know that internet is about culture. Uh, the culture is about sharing, and well, the, the cinema, uh, Either you watch movies at home using BitTorrent or you go to the, the theaters. Uh, well, the, the movie industry, we can criti you can critique it and you can say uh, many, many bad things about it, but still it's, uh, it brings some, uh, some culture and some things that we share. Like uh, uh, there have been a lot of jokes uh, since the beginning of the camp uh, about uh, the Monty Python. Uh, and so on. So, yeah, to me, even the cinema should embrace internet and the peer to peer, and they shouldn't just fight about it. And, well, the little, uh, the little ones in this industry, in this, and maybe not industry, but in this field, have, I think maybe they, they start to understand that internet is not their enemy and they can actually use the uh, the internet to to make their uh, passion live and to make cinema uh, uh, continue to to be in in our lives. And also, as I said, it's a kind of way to to disrupt centralization. Um, the the films are pretty heavy, so we generate a lot of bandwidth, and it's actually a good thing for the little internet access providers to have uh, such a high bandwidth, uh, because uh, one thing about the, um, the bandwidth on the internet is that the, the, um, the more you use, the, the less it costs. Uh, so this is kind of uh, allowing some, ena enabling some little uh, non-profit organization to, to go, uh, to, to pass a kind of a barrier uh, that exists for little organization that use a very small amount of bandwidth. It costs a lot. Uh, and so by doing this, the, the bandwidth is, is costing them uh, much less. And so it's just an example of how you can, well, uh, disrupt centralization. And there are many others, I'm pretty sure of it. And we need more, like we, we try to make sort of uh, a, a strange mm, a wedding between, strange marriage alliance between peer-to-peer uh, -peer and the, 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 the cinema, but I'm sure there are other fields which can be mixed uh, as well. And so, well, it's up to you to, to find other, other examples. So if you have questions, I'm all yours. Are you all dead? I cannot see you, but <laughs> you're all pretty silent. Does the TCP crypto model allow for the transfer by peer-to-peer? -peer? In other words, do they use uh, shared key in the cinema as an individual key for cinema? Uh, good question. Uh, there is an actual key thing. Uh, and if I remember correctly, that's an individual key for each cinema, and it's being sent uh, um, by a side channel. Like it's not being sent by the by the the, the digital uh, transport. It's being sent directly to the to the cinema, I think. Um, and well, in VLC, the the support is being added also to decrypt the. When you have the key and the and the film, you can read the you can read the movie. And usually, what is interesting is that, at least for our level of the the cinema business, the independent distributors and so on, they don't use uh, KDM. That's the name of the 
of this thing. They don't use it to prevent, uh, not, not really to prevent uh, leaks, but uh, as, a, um, as an additional way to track uh, which cinema is screening which film. And um, yeah, so it's usually this, uh, the idea between the use of this and not really to prevent the any leaks because yeah the, the films are like it's as I said uh, pretty heavy and to convert it it's not that easy and well nobody is really interested in French documentaries anyway. Sorry, I didn't get what you... Maybe I said, in, uh, maybe I was mistaken, maybe it's a short key, I don't know. I, I, I can check afterwards. Yeah. I don't know. I, I can check afterwards if you want. Yeah, but um, yeah, as I said, it's not mandatory. The key thing, and I've a, a good part of the films are not encrypted, and so yeah. Yes. I think most of them actually. No. And well, as I said, it's non-mainstream movies, so there is no actual, I think, demand for this kind of things, and we're not willing to, to well, betray the people who uh, allows us to do this by leaking the, converting the files and so on. Uh, but we are, we're more interesting in the fact that. With in the in the idea to to make them enter our world our world and make our worlds collide, than to um, anyway if we would leak the files uh, the project would end pretty quickly uh, and especially the kind of films that are being screened people usually want to go to the theater to watch them because the as I said the for example the Utopia Cinema. Um, it's uh, uh, beautiful theaters with a uh, bar, restaurant, and so on, uh, with a very uh, convivial uh, thing going on. You have discussions after the film, before the film, with the director, and so on. It's uh, quite, um, they organize uh, uh, install parties, <laughs> for example, for installing Linux and so on. Uh, so they have uh, quite um, a militant uh, approach. And usually people uh, go, go to the theaters to uh, um, not just watch the film, but also discuss the film with uh, other spectators. So um, there is no, I don't think people would be interested in, in uh, downloading them uh, right at the moment it, uh, it goes uh, on screen. Do you have other questions? Well, thank you for attention. <laughs>